Welcome back to Evaluating Measurements. In this continuation, we're going to talk about how accurate a measurement can be and how we can represent uncertainty in our measurements. The first thing that we want to put out there is that the accuracy of our measurements really depend on the accuracy of the tool that we use to make the measurement. So starting from there, we have two major ideas that we're going to approach in this lesson. The first idea is that measured quantities have some uncertainty attached to them. All measurements have some uncertainty attached to them. There's no way we can really get away from that. But let's look at an example of this. This picture shows two electronic balances. Each one has a different degree of accuracy. I put a green sponge on the balance on the right. This balance tells me that this green sponge is 6 grams. But if I move the green sponge to the other balance, I now see that it's 6.6 .6 grams. Now does that mean the first balance was wrong? No, because the first balance was certain that it was 6 grams. But the second balance tells us a little bit more information about it. Now we know it's 6.6 .6 grams. Now you can sort of visualize if we had another balance that went one more decimal place, we may find out more about this green sponge. Maybe it's 6.61 or 6.62 or 6.69. There's a big range in there. And we could keep getting to better and better balances, but the fact of the matter remains that we're never going to be able to eliminate that next digit of uncertainty. We don't really know what's going to come next. There's always more we could know. And these balances are only able to give us a certain degree of accuracy. So this brings us to our next big idea, that we can never eliminate uncertainty completely. We can keep getting more and more accurate, but we can never get rid of this uncertainty entirely. It'll always be there. So that means we need to have a way to represent our uncertainty in our measurements. And that brings us to the idea of significant figures or sig figs. Significant figures are one way of identifying and representing the amount of uncertainty in a measurement. They're not the only way, they're probably not the best way, but they are convenient and sort of easy to handle method of dealing with this uncertainty in measurements. There are a bunch of rules about identifying significant figures uh, that you can read in any textbook or web page. So instead, let's see if we can get an understanding or feeling about how to approach significant figures that makes sense from an uncertainty standpoint. Let's look at a sequence of measurements and we'll identify the number of significant figures and talk about why it's that many significant figures or not. So our first number is 5.6 grams. Here's our first measurement that we're going to evaluate. Now, both of these digits tell us something about the measurement. We know that it's 5 grams, we know that it's 0.6, so these are two significant figures, or two SFs, two sig figs. Now let's throw in another digit and see what happens. So we have 5.06 grams in our next measurement. Now the 5 still tells us very relevant information, but the 6 tells us relevant information, and the 0 is important for placing this 6 in the right spot. So this is three significant figures. Okay, all three of these digits are significant. They tell us something about the accuracy or certainty of the measurement. Now let's try this. 0.5.06 grams. Now all we've changed between the previous measurement and this one is that we tacked on a zero in the front. But does that zero actually tell us any more about the measurement? Does it make us any more certain? No, not really. Okay, we knew that it was only five. So saying 0.5 is not really significant. So this is still three significant figures. Now let's look at a fourth measurement, 5.060 grams. Now in math, you may think that this is equivalent to this one up here. You may think that these two are equivalent numbers. Mathematically, sure, they probably are. However, when we're talking about measurements, this extra zero at the end actually means something. It tells us that we are certain that this is a zero, whereas in this earlier measurement, this could be 5.061 or 5.068. We don't really know what that next digit is. Whereas this example, this zero is significant because it tells us for certain that this is a zero in this spot. So in this measurement, all four digits are significant. So we have four significant figures. Now the last case the last case we're going to look at is a number that doesn't have a decimal in it, and this can become a little bit ambiguous. So let's look at this number. Okay, 500,600. Let's work our way through this number. This 5 is definitely significant. 
This six is definitely significant because it gives us some information and these zeros are between them so they're also significant. The real question then is about these last two zeros. Are they significant? Well, the, the truth is we don't really know. It depends on what other information we have. We should always assume that if they're at the end here and there's no decimal, that they're not significant. Okay? Because we don't really know what device or what instrument was used to make this measurement. Maybe the device was only accurate up until the hundreds place and we don't really know if this is actually 600 or if it's 601 or 602 or 653. Okay? So we should assume, unless we know otherwise, that these last zeros are not significant if there's no decimal. So this one is going to have four significant figures. However, if we knew that this was an exact measurement, if we knew that the device used to make this measurement, whatever it was measuring, if we knew that it actually measured to the ones place accurately, then this would have six significant figures. But it's a judgment call. When there's no decimal, it has to be a judgment call based on what you know. And if you don't know enough, you should always assume that the last zeros are not accurate or not significant in terms of significant figures. Now, significant figures can be complicated. At the very end of this video, I'm going to show you a shortcut on how to quickly identify the number of significant figures. But you should really focus on trying to build an understanding of where significant figures come from and what it has to do with uncertainty because that connection is important between the concepts. Now that we just did all that work in figuring out the connection between uncertainty and significant figures and how to figure out how many significant figures there are in a measurement, let's look at some exceptions to when significant figures are not relevant. And there's really just one category and that's the fact that some numbers do not have any uncertainty attached to them whatsoever. The most common example of this is counting. If I open a carton of eggs and count 12 of them, there are exactly 12 eggs, there's no uncertainty about that number, decimal point or not. Okay, So things that you count, you don't apply significant figures to those. You can maybe consider them as having infinite significant figures. Another place that significant figures do not come into play are conversion factors, like we talked about in the dimensional analysis video. So if we have something like one mile uh, is equal to 5,280 feet, okay? This 5,280 is exact. We do not treat this as having three significant figures for the purpose of any kind of calculation. We just treat this as having no uncertainty because we're just converting between miles and feet. So now we've talked about counting significant figures in a number and what numbers don't even have significant figures. Uh, we should probably start talking about why any of this is relevant in the first place. So let's look at an example of where significant figures plays an important role in evaluating measurements. So we have this scenario. A student wants to determine the density of an object and collects the following data. Mass is 14.1 grams, volume is 2.3 milliliters. If you remember from the density lesson, density equals mass over volume. So we could plug these numbers in, density equals 14.1 divided by 2.3 milliliters, and we would get some crazy number in the calculator that looks like this. 6.130434782 grams per milliliter. Now, this should set off some alarm bells to you, and if it doesn't, make a note of this. Okay, This is not an okay thing to write down. Uh, you should never, ever have more accuracy, so this number implies more accuracy slash less uncertainty than your original measurements. So there's no way you can go from a less certain measurement to a more certain answer. Okay, That just doesn't make sense. Our general rule of dealing with this is to round a calculated value to the number of significant figures as your least accurate measurement. So in this case, the volume has only two significant figures. So we're going to round the density to also have two significant figures. So here's one and here's two. So density is really going to be 6.1 because of three rounds down. 6.1 grams per milliliter. Significant figures can be a little confusing at first, but I said I would do a little quick shortcut method at the end of this video, so keep watching for that. Otherwise, write down any questions you have from this lesson and bring them in with you to class. All right, so here I'm gonna show you a shortcut for figuring out how many significant figures are in a measurement. We have a outline of the United States here, the continental United States here. On this coast, we have the Pacific Ocean, on this coast, we have the Atlantic Ocean. Now, bear with me, this is not just a geography lesson. 
So Pacific and Atlantic, you notice I'm only writing the first letter of each. This is going to correspond to present and absent. Okay, Pacific, Atlantic, corresponding to present and absent. And what I'm referring to is the decimal. If you have a decimal in the number or not. So let's look at how this works. Uh, my first sort of example here will be 6.030. I'm going to evaluate how many significant figures this has using this method. So watch what I do next. Because the decimal is present, I start from this side. I start from the left side, and I start counting to the right. Okay? What I do is I look for the first non-zero digit, that's this one, and I count every digit after that, and that's how many significant figures I have. So this says one, two, three, four. Four significant figures. If I take that same number, and now the same arrangement of numbers, now the decimal is absent. So I'm going to start from this side, and I'm going to count from right to left. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm looking for the first non-zero digit, and then counting everything, including that and afterwards. I start from the right, and the first digit that I hit is a zero, which does not count. I'm looking for a non-zero digit. So I go to the three. Well, there we go. So now I start counting. One, two, three. This has three significant figures. Okay. Just to do one more example, let's look at 23.0500, just to make sure we're on the same page here. So in this case, the decimal is present, so I'm going to start on the left side. I'm looking for the first non here. I'll even put in, I'll even put in a zero here. Starting from the left, I'm looking for the first non-zero digit as I go to the right. So I start over here. First digit is zero, I ignore it. Next one's a two, so now I start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has six significant figures. Okay? This method is very useful for quickly finding the number of significant figures in any measurement.